Well, folks, I'm back at one of my favorite train stores. This is the train store I've been going to ever since I was a kid. It was the first train shop I ever visited. The majority of the stuff on my layout was purchased here. That's the track, the trees, the buildings, etc. Uh, and it was kind of interesting coming here this time because the guy there asked if I had done a video in the past of his store. And I told him I did do a video in the past of his store, but I didn't take any footage on the inside. So he was actually very thankful, uh, you know, for making some free advertising basically for his store. And I asked him if I could take more footage. And he said yes. So uh, I took a lot of footage. This section is basically where all the uh, trains that are on sale go, so you'll, that's why there's such a variety of different qualities. And here is my favorite section of every hobby store, the consignment section, where they're selling off used stuff. Um, this hobby shop doesn't usually keep most of its um, used model trains in the consignment section, they're usually in the sale section. Uh, but I always like checking out this area, this is where I wound up getting that River Rossi shed. I've always been fascinated by this. And they've got magazines, uh, Atlas Track, Pico Track. They've got a very good selection. And for beginners, they've got some starter sets of uh, different uh, types. They're all made by Bachman. And here's their display window. Um, a lot of end scale stuff in there. Uh, they've got figures for your buildings. And uh, I think this was a Bachman starter set, although there was no advertising. And here's their display shelf. All these models here are N scale, and all the ones over here are HO. They've got a pretty good selection, I have to say. So anyways, the things I finally decided to buy were, first of all, this little uh, Canadian National switcher locomotive. It's just a cheap uh, little switcher that they had in the second hand section. It was only 14 bucks, and I just thought it was a good buy. I'm not sure what make it is. Um, at first I thought it might have been an RSO, but um, I have two other RSO locomotives just like it, like the same body style, and they have traction tires. And also I noticed, I believe that's the AHM Tempo logo, but I don't see, usually it would say AHM on the bottom, so I'm not sure who this is by. Um, somebody in the comments will probably know, but the fact that it doesn't have traction tires is something I really like, because it will just run a lot smoother, and they did test this in the hobby shop, um, and it ran very, very smooth for a locomotive of its age, so... Yeah, very nice buy there. So I'll just put that one off to the side there. Uh, the second thing I decided to buy was this bin of grass. I'm not sure if you guys remember, but a few months ago I went to the hobby shop and I bought some grass, and it turned out I'd got the wrong shade. In fact, I hadn't actually bought um, grass. I had bought turf, which is what you're supposed to use um, when you're building, I guess, parts of mountain scenes. They simulate weeds and stuff. You can use them to create model trees. Um, and it just looks ridiculous as grass. I mean, it's really not what it's meant for. So I just bought this great big canister of grass. This should last me a pretty long time, and also the uh, good thing about it is that, uh, you know, since there's so much of it and I'm building a new layout, I won't run out anytime soon. So I felt like that was a good buy. I'm just going to put this off to the side because the next thing I bought was pretty special. It is kind of uncharacteristic of the channel, actually, actually and you'll see why. This is a um, Mahano steam locomotive. This was a locomotive that was in the display shelf. And uh, basically the guy at the hobby shop said that he bought this at an estate a few years ago and nobody's bought it ever since. And it's uh, basically in new condition. And uh, I don't even have enough room on my workbench really. And you can see it's just a beautiful locomotive. It runs really, really well. And I have a few other Mahano locomotives, so I just thought this was a great addition to my steamer collection. So I'm really excited. Um, it was a little bit expensive. I think it was about 90 Canadian dollars. Um, but I worked two summer jobs this summer, so I was just like, yeah, what the heck? Let's get this thing. It's cool. Um, it's also kind of an unusual style, too, because you'll notice most uh, steamers only have uh, four driving wheels. Uh, this one has five on each side, so it's a two, ten, two, so that's a bit unusual. Uh, the tender is actually identical to my, uh, 060 bullet nose locomotive, um, except the bullet nose has a green tender and this one has a black tender. It looks very nice and, uh, you know, these old Mahano locomotives, they were just detailed very, very nicely, so I'm very happy with this buy and I can't wait to see it run on my layout. Um, I think I might actually even put a decoder in this one because I just feel like it's such a special locomotive. It should uh, be amongst the other engines that all have decoders in them. 
uh, you know, so I can run them all together. So yeah, very, very cool buy. So first off is just my little RSO switcher. Very, very nice little engine. And uh, well, as we'll try, you can see it's actually a somewhat smooth runner. It's fairly quiet. I believe the light works on it. Fair enough for an engine, and again, no traction tires, so nothing to wear out. And there's that headlight I was talking about. So yeah, great little buy. And it's time to run the steamer. So we've got her all set up on the track, and I have to say, Mahano just did such a good job building these things back in the day. The detail is pretty good on them, and I have other Mahano engines which I've had for over 10 years, and they all still run very good. So uh, I think they were pretty uh, decent quality, so... But anyway, we'll see how well she actually runs. So we're gonna do a little test. And a very, very smooth start. I'm just gonna keep giving her power. Now, keep in mind this locomotive is a 2102, which is pretty crazy. It's able to handle 18 radius inch curves, so the fact it's able to do that is pretty remarkable. The guy at the hobby shop uh, quite generously let us try the thing out on uh, his layout just to make sure it could handle these types of curves. 